Kiki. Good afternoon, good morning, greetings from the wonderful island of Bali. My name is Natalia Saputra and those who follow us in our virtual tours know that today we are having our seventh virtual tour from the start of the series of these tours in July 2020. Of course, we've uh, gone a long way. We've been to many islands, visited many nice places. Today's edition is a very special one. First of all, you perhaps see that my background is very unusual today. I am in the hotel, a new property that has opened its doors just in January this year. I hope you would immensely enjoy the tour that we are going to make around the property. The name is Nirjara, that means waterfall, a beautiful place indeed, a hotel that has a very unique concept sustainable luxury. But you are to hear and to see more a little bit later. Let me introduce you other things and places we are going to see today. After this beautiful hotel, we are going to travel to Bali Safari and Marine Park. We are going to pet the animals, although virtually, but I'm sure you will immensely enjoy having some time with the beautiful animals in Bali. And then, Another surprise for you, we are going to beautiful island of Lombok, enchanting Lombok, just a short flight from Bali, about 20 to 25 minutes, but having completely unique nature, very different to Bali, and of course, culture and traditions. And of course, as a highlight of our tour today, we are going to visit Tana Toraja. I'm sure many of you have seen lots of videos in YouTube, in social media, portraying very unique rituals that Torajan people perform until nowadays. And you will have an opportunity today to travel with us live to Tana Toraja to witness all the things yourself firsthand. Once again, I would like to remind you that this is live tour. We did not pre-record anything in advance. This is going to happen as it is going to happen. Of course, having six virtual tours in our experience, we are trying to do everything perfect and smooth. But I would like to apologize in advance if any connection problem happens. Let us be patient and wait for our presenters to be back to us. And of course, at the end of our tour, we are going to have lucky draw. For those who registered via Zoom, they will be eligible to have a possibility to win one night in this beautiful hotel and also with breakfast and dinner as well as tickets to Safari Park. So you can start planning your trip to Bali. And of course, I would love to show you the villa I am in, but it will happen at the end of our journey. Let me not talk more. Let us see and enjoy with our own eyes. And I'm inviting here Mr. Alejandro, the general manager of Nirjara, where I am now, and he is going to show you this beautiful place. Mr. Alejandro, the floor is yours. Please unmute yourself so we can all hear you. Yes. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank Hello. you for your time and for your interest. Uh, my name is Alejandro Rueda, and I'm the manager of Nirjara. We'll take you to a little tour, you know, from, uh, from the hotel. I'm just entering right now. This is the reception where we take and we sit our guests here. Once they arrive, we take care of them. You know, we take the temperature. We do our checks, of course, for COVID. This is a little art feature that we have here at the hotel. Most of the uh, wood that we have used in the property is being recycled. And also the use of local stone. We are located in Tabanan, in Kendungu Beach. This is a great time for me to show you the hotel because the sun is shining great. It was a, a cloudy day. And this is a panoramic view of the hotel where I'm sitting. Uh, that's this Ambu restaurant. Ambu means water in Sanskrit. The same way Nirjara means waterfall in Sanskrit. Also, if you see at the very end over there, there's a natural waterfall that we, let's say, recuperated. We clean it after being, you know, centuries covered with mud and logs. 
and we brought it back to life. I will show you from another point, you know, some of the other features that we have in the hotel. There's a big cinema there for now, a small cinema for nine people, where we also broadcast uh, uh, movies for our guests from a selection of 500, all right? Let's walk a little bit more. This hotel was just open during April. No, sorry, during uh, the month of March, we had to close immediately in April due to the COVID circumstances. And uh, we're back in operation with a few rooms actually, you know, staying with us at the moment. So it's good, we're in operation. Let me show you, this is the library. Let me go like this. So it's actually a very nice place for people if they want to work. We have some long stays and they use this facility a lot, you know, with air conditioning and great, uh, great uh, Wi-Fi connection. This is what uh, the guests are asked for. I will show you very fast one of my favorite rooms in the hotel. This is a two bedroom villa with a private villa here. We have five of these rooms. We have had many uh, families uh, this time, you know, with the expats and the locals staying, also people from Surabaya. This is with air conditioned living room the private pool and the uh, the children room let's say the extra room over there and also here the main room so you can have a little idea of our decoration what we use here in Lirjara basically textiles also for also from here are sourced in Bali as well as the ceramics, we have a zero plastic policy. There's no plastic that you will be able to find in the hotel. And we have amazing materials and textiles everywhere. I'm gonna run a little bit. I don't know how many minutes I have left, like 29. But let me get back to you right here. Right. So uh, we're in the village of, uh, uh, as I mentioned, Kendungu area. And uh, we've been uh, helping the locals, you know, with, uh, of course, you know, hiring most of the people from the village. And uh, also, as I mentioned, like developing the area. We, hope we have paved the whole uh, uh, village to enter the Nirjara district. This is a panoramic view. This is our, our canopy suites. And I'm going to take you to one of them right now. <laughs> This is Padma at our spa. We have a full equipped spa with three rooms and also our gym over there at the end. Let me run a little bit. And I'm gonna take you to one room that is very special. Everybody wants to stay in this room. We have, we have six types of rooms. The one that I'm showing you is the canopy suite. Natalia will show you later the, uh, the river pavilion. Let me show you fast. That's our gym. We're there with great view, a lot of light. And this is the, the room that I told you that is all made with recycled wood. Let me show you, we are finally here. I like to take your people to this space because when they are here, they cannot believe that this is true, you know, but maybe you can see there. It's a panoramic view of the hotel. You see the restaurant in that area, the main pool, the waterfall. This is the yoga shala made by people from Ibuku here in Bali, well-known architects. And I think is the epitome of sustainability in architecture. It's also, I see it as my work of art in the hotel. Those are the river pavilions. Actually, Natalia is staying in right, that one over there, so when you see her, you can just picture that she's talking from there. And uh, you see the rice fields. In the morning, you see Batucaru from there. And uh, there's a very nice terrace here on the top. And this is what I'm talking about. The rice fields at the end, Batucaru, and the the ocean over there. We have direct uh, sunrise during the months of uh, December to March right over there. 
And uh, so basically, I wanted to give you uh, an idea of the property. Uh, we have 25 rooms. I call that the, I say that the social distancing almost happens naturally in this property uh, with this very little amount of people. Uh, we are detail oriented and also focusing the aspect of the sustainability. All our water is uh, drinkable in the, in the property. You can drink it from the faucet. We do by inverse osmosis. So it's uh, potable for people to drink. I have to say that this is my first, uh, my second Zoom meeting ever. Normally I have done it with my family and uh, you're talking with, uh, with some acquaintances, but it's the first time I do it for jobs. Uh, and I hope like you enjoy this little tour of the property. I will show you a little bit more over there. This is the three houses. It's amazing, the coconut grove. It's like a little oasis in the middle of rice fields in an undeveloped still yet beautiful part of, uh, of Bali, just 15 meters, you know, 15 minutes from Changu area. So uh, this is my name is Alejandro. Trust that your guests will be really well taken care of. You know, the service here is personalized. And uh, of course, when you come stay with us, you know, I will do the same tour, you know, a little bit more fast and take people, of course, through the whole property to show them around. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, hope to see you in Ujara very soon. Thank you so much, Alejandro. This is a beautiful tour, absolutely unique property. How many properties in the world have you seen having their own waterfall? I'm sure there are just a few in the whole universe. I don't universe. know, maybe. Well, this is a good thing because this is a natural waterfall, you know, maybe in Disneyland, yeah, I don't exactly. know. Like yeah. Epcot Center, Disneyland, but this is natural. And as I told you, like we are, uh, let me just show it to you like that. We, uh, we clean it because of course with the, after many years it was covered with uh, so much uh, things and we mm -hmm. resuscitated from what it was. And the whole construction was around it and it used a very pleasant, uh, relaxing sound, you know, like I always wish when my guests come here, I wish them waterfall dreams and they, and they seem to understand, you know, the spirit of the hotel is very relaxing. It's a water hotel, very malleable and very, uh, let's say, pleasing to everyone, I would say. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for the tour. And know, definitely I, I that's know. not going to be the last thing you see of Nirjara because I am in a river pavilion and I'm going to show it to you at the end of our tour. So uh, now, yeah, this is here. Here I am <laughs> waving to you all. So from here, we will tell you, take you to the eastern part of Bali to Safari Park. And thank you so much once again, Alejandro. And we will see you personally. Hopefully everyone will be able to come to Bali soon. And for the lucky one who will win the voucher of stay in Nirjara, you may come to this meeting sooner than many of us. So let us continue to Bali Safari and Marine Park. I am sure all of you, when you travel, you want to visit some places uh, with animals because animals bring us joy. They make our days happy, full of meaning when we communicate with those who cannot speak but can express so many feelings by many other different ways. And I should tell you the truth that Bali Safari is one of the places I visit the most in the island. My kids absolutely enjoy communication with the animals uh, learning actually about their habits, about endangered species, and many other things what Bali Safari does. So let us welcome here Bali Safari team to show us around and give you a little bit of time with their beautiful animals. Bali Safari team, you are welcome to be here with us. Hello everyone, so welcome to Bali Safari Park. So before we start to inside at our panorama view, I would like to introduce a little bit about the protocol here. Yeah, let's, you can see here, we have water park first. 
and we also available this soap to wash your hand before you come in and then after that in here you can dry your hand you can dry your hand by using this tissue and then please before you come into the park you must use your face mask if no we will suggest you to wear it okay let's start here then we also will check your body temperature first like this one okay right so next we come to see our cashier here so let's see at the floor we have the animal footprint here so this is to do the basic distancing during this situation and you can look at also at our cashier here we also prepare some hand sanitizer and then they also limited by the glass so is this to make safety right and next we're going to our information center so here around then okay right so this is our information center when the visitors need the information center they need to come in here and also we prefer like this barcode this barcode uh, the visitor can scan this barcode if they need the information like the map and then the activity inside right we also going in now so around here we have also a little cafe before you came in and then we have the statue of Fanda here. Somebody maybe want to go to. And then here we entry. We have the security check here. The security will check your bag before you come into the park. Okay, now we will going to see our panorama inside. Hi guys. Hello everyone. How are you today? I hope you guys are doing fine. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Aris. And I'm one of the education staff here in Bali Safari and Marine Park. And today I'm not alone. I'm accompanied by one of the keeper here. Bisa di perkenalkan namanya? Okay, nama saya Wayan Gede Priyasa. Di keeper di Panorama. Okay, so his name is Wayan Gede Putrayasa, and he's one of the keeper here in this park, especially in the Panorama area. So. He will assist me to uh, to show around this area. And now we are in the panorama area, and in this area, we're going to show you some of the facilities that we have here in Bali Safari and Marine Park. And not only the, the accommodation, after this, I will show you about uh, various kind of animal here that we have in this area. So first, I'm going to show you the accommodation that we have here in Bali Safari. Here we have Mara River Safari Lodge. So here you also can stay in our lodge. And from the balcony, you can see the view of the animals here. So we approximately have around 40 rooms in this accommodation. And we also have the pool in that area too. If you want to swim, you also can enjoy swimming with your family if you visit this park with your family, you also can uh, have, having fun and swimming together. Okay, now let, let's talk about this area. So now we are in the Mara River area. So this area is called Mara River. So the name Mara River is actually come from the real Mara River that is located and lays in the Kenya and also in the Maasai region or Tanzania. The name Mara is actually named by the tribe there in Kenya. It was named by the, uh, the Maasai tribe there. And the, the meaning of Mara means uh, spotted. It is because of the round shaped bushy trees around this area, which make this area look spotted or spotty. And now we are going to show you the first animal here that we have in this area. My goodness, you are walking so close to rhinos. Yeah, let's take a closer look to our rhino here. Everyone right here, we have a couple of rhinos. We have a female and a male. Oh. 
Yeah, the male name Mr. Nelson. So let me check them out first. Okay, so this one is Mr. Nelson. This this big boy is the male, and uh, on the right side is the female name Hima. So rhino is the second largest mammal on the land after the elephants. They can weigh up to 3.5 tons. It's about 300 and 500, I mean 3,500 kilograms. And rhino also can run pretty fast. They can run up to 50 kilometers per hour, but they only can run straight. They cannot turn their body because they have a very poor eyesight but they actually have a very good hearing and sense of smell. And rhino usually will cover their body with mud, with mud or dirt, and it helps them to protect their skin from sunlight. And also it can help them to protect their skin from the uh, insects. Yeah. And in this area, this is actually the route for the safari journey. If you visit Safari Park, you also can join the safari journey along with the bus. So you will get on the bus and you will see the scenery of the animals around this park. Yeah, let's move on to the next animal, everyone. Okay, there is more animals coming now. We look very excited, everyone. Yeah, you can see the running zebra in this area. Yeah, so zebra is one of the most famous animals that we have here in Bali Safari Park. Now let's take a closer look of our zebra. So they are actually Chapman zebra. Chapman zebra is the smallest zebra in Africa. And they are very unique because they have three colors on their body which are black, white, and brown. So the brown color is in the middle of the white. So the basic color of zebra is black with white stripes on their body. And just like our fingerprints, none of two have the same stripes. They have a different stripes to each other. It's, it, yeah, to show their identical differences. So in this part, we give them, we feed them with the various kind of fruits. Yeah, like carrots. So, and also, not only Chapman zebra, we also have another species of zebra that we have in this park. We also have gravy zebra. So the gravy zebra is actually bigger than this. So gravy, we, have, we also have uh, the biggest zebra from, Af from Africa. And yeah. So, and also, if you stay around the zebra, you have to be careful because this animal will kick everything behind them. They can kick by using their strong hind legs. So, if you stay around the zebra, you, you better be careful because. They will kick everything behind them, don't try to run after them, or don't even try to tap their butt, or they will kick by, by using their strong hind legs. So the function of the stripe is actually to make an optical illusion for the predator who is trying to catch them. They will, they, they will stay as a group like this. They're actually a very social animal, so they will stay as a group, and their stripes will make an optical illusion, which make their predators feel. Uh, confused and dizzy because of the optical illusion. And did you know that the baby zebra also can remember their mother's stripes? So, yeah, when the, when the baby zebra are born, they will, the mother will walk around in front of the baby. So the baby will remember the stripe. And let's talk about the plantation that we have here in Bali Park Park. It is actually uh, one of the most plantations that can be found in Mara River, around the Mara River area. And right there, as you can see, we have a very huge and massive tree right there. And it's called Baobab tree. So Baobab tree is one of the famous trees that can be found in the Mara River area. 
there is actually nine species of this tree. And this tree can be found in Madagascar and also in Australia. And also this tree is very useful. People use this tree for many things, such as making for shelter for people to live in this tree. So people will try to make a hole in this tree and they will use it for shelter. And people also can use this tree to do ceremony. And also people can use this tree to make for food and even can make drinks like juice and beers from the fruit. And in Mara River area, the very, the most common animal that you can find is the uh, uh, zebras, uh, wildebeest, and also a, a very rare black rhino. Yeah. And did you know that uh, Mara River is actually very famous for the zebra crossing? So, the, I mean, for the zebra crossing and also the wildebeest crossing. Wildebeest usually will uh, do migration to get to the green area. So they will try to uh, cross the Mara River. And it's also very famous for the crocodiles. In Mara River, there are so many crocodiles who take chance whenever the wildebeest try to cross the, the area. Yeah. There is actually still a lot more animal that we, that we would like to see. I mean, we would like to show you in this park. But if you visit this park, you will see a lot kinds of animals. Yeah, we actually have much more than this. And also, uh, Bali Safari Park has a three concept. It is uh, Indonesia, India, Africa. So during the uh, safari journey, you, you visit three areas, which is the Indonesia area, India area, and also Africa area. Okay, I think that's all for the presentation today. And we hope you enjoy uh, our presentation. And we will always welcome you to visit our park. And thank you very much for your attention. Have a nice day and bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bali Safari team. I'm sure everyone who misses Bali is very happy to see beautiful animals and the beautiful in Bali right now. Even though we are starting to get some rain here, as you know, from October onwards is our rainy season, wet season. But the weather is still beautiful and the rains mostly come in the night. So let us travel further to Lombok. We live behind beautiful Bali, Nirjara, beautiful new property in the island, as well as Bali Safari and Marine Park. Thank you once again for showing us what you intended to show to our listeners, to our viewers. And let us travel now to Lombok. Lombok is a neighbor of Bali. We are just divided by Lombok Strait. And it will take you about one and a half hours if you use the boat, the speed boat, to get to Lombok, or perhaps around 20, 25 minutes if you use the plane. Lombok is a little bit smaller than Bali, but approximately the same size. It's about 4,514 square kilometers in size. The nature, however, is different. And of course, a Lombok is usually used by those who come to Bali is laid back beach holiday because the beaches in Lombok are very beautiful. There is also a very tall mountain, Rinjani, which is more than 3,700 meters high, usually used for those who love trekking and observing nature. And of course, the famous Gili Islands. You can get like 10, 15 minutes speedboat from Lombok and get to one of the barefoot vacation islands. So I call them Gilis. Today, with our wonderful guide Arif, we are going to visit one of the palaces in Lombok. Actually, it's a beautiful place to, uh, to visit as well as to know the history and a little bit of traditions and culture of Lombok. Arif, I would like to have you here to tell us about the palace you are at now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Arif. 
right now I'm uh, standing in the front of uh, Narmada Summer Palace, West Lombok. Yeah, actually, this is uh, one of the most uh, visited uh, places on the island. But uh, since the uh, pandemic of uh, virus 19, it's everything has changed uh, absolutely upside down. But actually, everybody, if everybody wants to go in, normally they pass uh, uh, ticket windows that's on my left, left hand side. And the price for uh, foreigners, if they want to go in, is just uh, 50,000 rupiah. As soon as I'm going to tell you lots about uh, inside. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, just um, a couple of steps from the gate here, um, there is um, a map of the uh, Summer Palace. So, um, Narmada Summer Palace is a quite wide area. That's about uh, three kilometers area. But if we explore all, all of them, I think we're gonna spend a lot of time. So we're gonna spend about uh, 15 minutes, something to take like highlights of the trip. Yeah, that's um, just, uh, uh, very close to where I'm standing here, there is a building. So the building is uh, uh, King's House building, whereas they used it by the kings when they came here and uh, last time. So um, this palace actually is uh, very old. This summer palace is very old. It was uh, built in 1727 by the king Anak Agung Gedengurah Karang Asam, and he's from Bali. And um, talking about the history of this palace, actually, uh, there is a, a very interesting stories. But uh, first, um, um, I'm going to show you uh, one building here in the front. This is uh, the building uh, looking green and white. So this is a um, 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 building called the Bali Terang. So we're going to uh, step up there. Yeah, this palace is uh, visited by the kings uh, just on a special time, like when the dry time su uh, season. So that's why they call it the uh, summer palace. So now that I'm standing on the, we call it Bali Terang. And to call it Bali Terang, because uh, this uh, location of the, the building is, um, um, I can say it's the quite highest uh, place uh, on this place. So uh, from here, as you can see, uh, a quite uh, wide view. Yeah. And uh, from this place, uh, you can see every corners of uh, uh, the areas. Yeah. And um, uh, talking about this place, we call it Balitrang because uh, uh, this is actually that used by the kings when they have like uh, easy time. So, um, so they have. Uh, like uh, chambers, like on my uh, left hand side here, there's uh, one chambers that used by uh, King Consort chambers and other uh, chambers also, um, um, they use it by uh, other, uh, other one of a uh, King's Consort. Actually, they have a uh, two consorts of the Kings, uh, one's from Lombok and the other one's from Bali. So underneath where, where I'm standing here is a kind of like a store. And then um, here in the front of me, uh, there is a kind of like stage. So the stage that, uh, that was used by, um, uh, by uh, dancers or something when they uh, performing uh, dance or something. Yeah, that's, um, not as I'm going to take you to one of the building, but um, on the way to there, that um, now as I'm telling the stories about uh, this area. Yeah, this park, okay, so this that. summer palace, mm -hmm. this summer palace, it was built in 1727 by the kings from Bali. The name of the king was Anak Agung Gedeng Urah Karang Asam. And why the kings of Bali uh, built this place? Because uh, in the last time, um, the king of Bali was control uh, some part of the island. So he was to make a kind of like a land extension to the islands of Lombok. 
Yeah, that's um, there is uh, another story why they built this place actually. Yeah, actually, um, the king was very often to climb up to the Mount Rinjani. So, Mount Rinjani is a uh, quite high mountain. I think it's uh, one of the highest mountains in Indonesia. So, not uh, only the kings, but um, I can say there's many people of the island that visit the place because uh, Mount Rinjani is a kind of like a holy mountains. So before uh, we continue the stories, uh, uh, I would like to show you there is one building here in the front. So when the king was here, the building in the front here, it was used as a kind of like an uh, arsenal. So that's like a gun store. But, um, you know, kinds of like guns that was uh, used by um, a king's troop in the past is very different like what we have like right, right now, I mean, like uh, the time being. I mean, that's uh, a kind of like uh, arrow uh, guns or spear gun, and then a kris or a sword or knife, that the store is in there. Yeah, that's um, in here. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. Very beautiful. So in here, yeah, it's beautiful and it, uh, actually it's uh, extremely beautiful. And um, in the front here, there is a kind of like a lake. So this lake is actually like artificial lake. That's a replica of uh, the lake as on the top of uh, Mount Rinjani. So the kings used to climb up to the Mount Rinjani because he's, uh, really, uh, he was really falling in love to uh, Mount Rinjani. And to climb the Mount Rinjani, actually, uh, there, is, uh, there was a kind of like a special directions. I mean, they have a kind of like a ritual ceremony that uh, uh, take place every year. So a kind of like annual ceremony. So um, to go up is uh, taking a kind of like uh, um, sacrifice things that like uh, bustlers or a piece of gold or uh, silvers or um, yeah, many, times, many things that um, where they uh, uh, think that value. So the value thing is uh, released in the, in the waters of uh, the lake. On uh, Sagara, on on uh, in the in, in the waters of Sagara Anak Lake there. So um, the meaning of um, the ceremony is hoping that uh, the nature can be uh, uh, stay harmony with uh, everybody uh, by uh, human beings or something. So um, the ceremony called it uh, Pakalam. Yeah, Pakalam is a kind of like a drown drown thing into the water. So, uh, so when they uh, go up there, and people take uh, kinds of like a butler or a piece of gold or um, many things, and uh, uh, and um, they uh, they release the uh, sacrifice things in the, in the, in the, in, the, in the water. So something here in the front, uh, this is uh, a kind of like a pool. Uh, this pool called it Sagara Munchar. So Sagara Munchar is, was uh, used by uh, King's concubines pools in the past. But um, now that uh, just uh, 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 normal pools, I mean common pools that are used by uh, uh, everybody, I mean children's like to puddle it on it. Yeah, that, um, I'm going to take you to uh, uh, one building that's one of the most uh, visited uh, place on the island. I mean, visit, uh, visited uh, uh, place in this park. Ah, you should tell so, us about this building, which is, I think, will attract a lot of female travelers to Lombok and to Narmada Palace. Yeah, that's, um, um, yeah, this is... Uh, Sorry, I, I'm, not, I'm not really hearing it clear. No problem, no problem, Mario. Just continue. Yeah. All right, just uh, here in the front here, um, there is um, a building with, um, this is uh, one of the most uh, visited uh, building in this place. So um, uh, why it's uh, visited by a lot of people? Because inside there is a kind of like spring. And the spring is a kind of like holy spring. And people call it... Uh, Contents of youth, or water, of, or water of eternity, or 
something like that. So um, uh, people go in and there, but of course that uh, before they go in, um, they they have to call a kinds of like uh, Hindu priest, and then we have to buy some flowers and um, something like uh, what we use it when they uh, make a kinds of like little ceremony. So then uh, they go in and there and take the waters. So the waters can be uh, drink, it can be uh, uh, flash on, on your face, and uh, also just uh, they can use for bath when they go home, because it's takeaway waters as well. Yeah. So um, now that I'm taking you to a replica of uh, the top of Mount Rinjani. So the kings built a kinds of uh, temple here called it uh, Maru Temple. So that is a kind of like uh, a replica of uh, 3,726 meters of Mount Rinjani Mountains. So the, the kings uh, built a kind of like a temple here, but the temple actually um, not really opens every day. So uh, it's only opens on certain times, like uh, uh, when they have a ceremony called it Pujiwali or something. So uh, we started from like the greenhouse and then we go down to a kinds of like, uh, I mean the greenhouse is kinds of like a rims of, uh, of the lake. And then we just uh, coming down and now coming up to the rims again. And uh, here in the front, um, there is a little bit higher a uh, place. And this is what we call it uh, Purameru. So things built on a little bit higher here. Yeah. So this is um, Narmada Summer Palace. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your attention. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arif. Thank you for showing us You're the welcome. beautiful Narmada Palace. You know what? I am sure ladies have heard what Arif said. Yeah, they have the fountain of youth in this palace. Actually, very convenient. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. could not any walk uh, to the mountain, so he built a palace that reminded him of the mountain and even the artificial lake. And then he has also the fountain of youth and the temple in this yeah. palace. So it is really convenient and very nice yeah. place to visit. I'm absolutely sure that those who dream about eternal youth will kind of try the Yeah, you're gonna try that. Okay, Ari, thank you so much. Um, let us move further from enchanting Lombok with the fountains of youth and tallest mountains to the land of Tana Toraja. Why I call it mysterious land of Tana Toraja? Because this is really a unique place. First of all, I think you all know that whenever we have virtual tours, I always point out, whenever we are going to see one of the authentic tribes of Indonesia, and we know that there are only three of them left, Batak and Sumatra, Dayak and Kalimantan, and Toraja people in Sulawesi. So today you are visiting a unique place with unique traditions. This is the animistic belief, the way of ancestors, that they are allowed to practice by the Indonesian government. The burial sites, I'm sure you have seen, they are all over the internet. It's a very unique way of burying their own people with great ceremonies. And of course, the houses that look like big boats on which perhaps the ancestors came to Toraja land. Let me not talk, let me let you hear Nathan, our guide in Toraja, who will show you this mysterious place. And I'm sure after this short introduction, you will be eager to visit it yourself. Nathan, good afternoon. Hello. Okay, yes, Nathan, okay. we are here. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear and we can see beautiful buildings okay. behind you. Okay, good. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
So my name is Nathan from Toraja, from Wiratur. So now we are in Toraja. Sometimes we call it on the mountain because uh, To means uh, people, Raja means on the highland. Sometimes we say Tana Toraja. Tana means country. Tana Toraja means people living on the highland. Because uh, now our position in around uh, 700 meters above sea level. So Toraja is very unique uh, culture and tradition. So now we are in the small village we call Kete Kesu. Kete Kesu is very famous and really unique village. Also we can see very well the typical Toraja houses and also several rice barn. And this is the mainly tourist object in Toraja because it's really complete around this area. What can we see in Toraja? Like a traditional Toraja house, also the rice paddies terrace around there. And also we have the megalithic stone. With the megalithic stone over there, it means this the special places for make the funeral ceremony for the high caste who die and make a very big ritual. So now my position very close to the rice barn and traditional house, just a five meters on the left side. And the gate, gateway or entrance to this object, uh, just in front of me around 20 meters over there. So for the visitor this moment, uh, they must to clean their uh, hand. So we prepare several places for uh, washing their hand and also for the hand sanitizer. And then check the temperature of the body for all the visitors. So I will show you <laughs> the mainly typical Toraja house. Yeah, over there with the rice barn. So this village we call Ketekesu, also protected by the UNESCO heritage for this moment. But this village, we can find the typical Toraja house everywhere. If we have time for discovery all the Toraja land, we can find many villages like this. But the other, some of them on the mountain, some of them on the valley, uh, but this one, it's more easy by the visitors because are located only three kilometers from the central town of Rantepau. So here we can see the, on the left side of me, all the Tongkonan house we call, yeah, we call Tongkonan, sorry, the typical Toraja house we call Tongkonan. Yeah, so the Tongkonan is look like a big boat because according to the history of the Toraja, that the ancestor of Toraja came from South China, from Yunnan in around 3000 until 1500 before Christ. Because in this period, there are the big migration from Yunnan to Indonesia, some of them going to Sumatra in Batak area, some of them go to uh, Borneo in Dayak, and the other come to Toraja. So that's why three ethnic, they have the, the house a little similar. So this Tongkonan or those Tongkonan, it has the name. The first one we call Tongkonan Bamba, the second one we call Sepang, the third one we call Kesu, and the fourth we call uh, Tonga. So there are four Tongkonan or typical Toraja house, the mainly uh, typical house around this area. So for the Toraja house, it has the buffalo head 
we call kabongo. This one we call kabongo, buffalo head. This is from the the wood, except the horns. The horn is really from the the horns of the buffalo who already slaughtering in the funeral for many years ago. And up of the buffalo head, there are also the katik. Yeah, it means if we find the house in Toraja, it has the buffalo head we call kabongo. Nathan, uh, we stopped hearing you. Perhaps accidentally your microphone was muted. So could you be so kind to check it? Because we really need to hear about those horns. It's okay. I already yes. un you are back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you okay. finished. And there is a wooden uh, buffalo, but the horns are real. Yeah, we finished yeah. that. The, the horns is real real uh, horn of buffalo already sacrificed and on top of the buffalo head there are also the cock head yeah we call katik if we find the typical house in the village in toraja it has two head buffalo and cock head it means this is the most important family who living in this house like the leader of the village so in inside of the Toraja house, there are three rooms. The first room we call Tangdo. In the middle or the second room we call Sali. And the third we call Sumbung. Three rooms inside, it has a different function. The first room we call Tangdo, normally for receiving the guests, like a lobby. And the second room inside, for cooking the food and also for dining room. And the third room for room for the parents. So also the basic floor for the Tongkonan, mainly before for the animals like a buffalo. Because buffalo is the symbol of the prosperity for Toraja. Until this time, we still growing and protect the buffaloes because buffalo are very important for Toraja people when they will do the funeral ceremony or the death ritual. So it costs too expensive for the animal or the buffalo in Toraja. So on the left side a little, I will show also the jaw, many jaw of the buffaloes. The buffalo who already slaughtering from the family who died from this, this house with the horns of buffalo in front of the typical house. Very important for Toraja people, if we did ceremony during several days, because mainly the funeral ceremony in Toraja for the high class, sometimes five days or one week, and sacrifice around uh, 24 buffalo until 30 or 40 buffalo for one person who died. So that's why in Toraja, if the Toraja people die, normally the, their family, they keep at home for a couple months, like uh, five or seven months, or sometimes a couple years, like one year, three years, or five years, or even more. Because uh, uh, the family really set when they remember of the family die, so we, if we still keep several uh, uh, weeks or several uh, months or years, and later slowly the sadness is finished. After that, they will make a big funeral. Of course, they need a lot of money because one buffalo, like a 30 million rupiah until 50 million for one buffalo. And for the spotted buffalo, it costs 150 million or 300 million rupiah yeah, like a mercedes buffalo <laughs> so <laughs> yeah this in Toraja we call mercedes <laughs> mercedes buffalo this buffalo the color black and white color and the blue eyes because it's really rare and symbol of the nobleman so that's why it costs too expensive so 
they, after the the family have enough money and then they will make a ritual all together. So that's why mainly on July, August, when we have a big holiday, also on December this moment, we, we can find a very big ritual or funeral ceremony in Toraja. So I continue about the Toraja house. After make the typical Toraja house to Tongkonan, obligatory make a rice bun in front of the Tongkonan because the rice bun, it is like a couple of the tongkonan. But mainly rice bun only to keep or storage the rice. So mainly from here, we put the bamboo leather uh, up there, there at the door, and then we can put the rice inside. So we keep the rice because in Toraja, mainly we have once or two time harvest a year. So that's why for us very important to keep. But the rice we keep inside is still with the bark because the rice with the bark, we can keep until uh, five or seven years. It's not problem. So also the more unique for the rice bun, it has the pillar from the palm tree. So this is a little slippery and the rats almost can go up. So this is really safe. So we cannot use another wood, only the uh, palm trees we call banga. So the, this first floor for the rice barn, mainly for the resting, like the visitor or there are several visitor in front of us. But if we have the funeral ceremony or wedding ceremony or other ceremony, so mainly this place is rice barn for the VIP place, like the leader of the village or the government or the priest or pastor. But for the uh, invitation or the guests, the family three months before, they make a temporary houses like a cottage around the house yard. Because uh, uh, during the big funeral, there are around 1,000 until 1,500 people come to condolence. So this is really, really big funeral. Yeah. So the Toraja house and the rice barn, normally it has the bamboo roof because bamboo very strong until 50 or 70 years. Yeah, and also we have the bamboo around here. We have also the, the forest bamboo everywhere so that's why bamboo also category the characteristic of the raja land so everywhere we can find the the bamboo and also the typical house and the rice barn both belong to the noblemen they have also several carving yeah there are several carving the other up there like symbol of the buffalo uh, the cock there are also symbol like uh, sun. There are also the symbol of the basket, and there are also the symbol of the buffaloes. Yeah. So too many uh, Torajan carving, the motif. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I will invite you. We are going behind of the Tongkonan. We can see the the family stone grave, or the burial site of the family around this area. So Very well, I think this the is behind. The, yeah, the most important to see because a lot of TV programs show in those places. Now we have the opportunity to witness it firsthand. Yeah. So I continue behind. Yeah, along the way to the barrel site, there are also several uh, souvenir shops and also still with the bamboo forest.
Ja, hallo? Yes, Nathan, we are here with you. Yes. We are also walking together with you to get close to the burial sites because oh, yes. it is something okay. exciting yeah, to see. So now see we, are in the, we are in the mm -hmm. burial site. So in Toraja, there are several kinds of the grave. There are also like a mausoleum made by concrete. And there are also wooden grave. There are also uh, stone grave in the cliff. So this moment I will show you several uh, mausoleum on the left side with the effigy of the dead body belong to the high caste who already sacrificed at least 24 buffalo, including spotted buffaloes. So the more unique around this one, wooden grave in Toraja we call Erong. Before all of them, all of them were uh, hanging up there on the cliff. So that's why sometimes we call hanging grave. Look like a coffin, but they are not coffin. They are the, the family grave. Because the family from many years ago, they put that body inside for the same family. Because before in Toraja, until this time, we still keep that body at home for several years. And they using the medicine traditional to protect the body, yeah, make like a mummy, yeah. And then the body is too dry. After that, the last time they burial that body for the last ceremony, ceremony directly inside. So they using the bamboo ladder to climb up, and then put that body inside. So this moment, a little different, because uh, now in Toraja, majority of the Christianity. So when their family die, they make a coffin, big coffin, and then they put a lot of offering inside, like the clothes, and also the ring from the gold, yeah, and many things inside. So for this grave, is still using now by the same caste because also same like in Bali we have also the caste and this one the statue or effigy of the dead body it's all belong to the high caste their family before slaughtering at least 24 buffalo like I told you before for one person who died it is not allowed for Toraja people if they prepare the effigy without uh, prepare 24 buffalo for the ritual. 24 buffalo for slaughtering, but the meat will be eating for during several days during the funeral and also share the meat to all the people in the village. So we move a little more up there. We can see still many hanging grapes up there. But the hanging grave like this, and the Tongkonan we saw in front, we cannot find only this in this village, but we can find many villages around the Toraja land if we are going to discovery. So in Toraja, very famous in the burial site, every three or four years, they will do the ceremony in front of the grave but only the close family, each family they come and respect to the spirit of the dead body. But first they take down the coffin and then they take out the body and then they clean all the bodies and they change their clothes. After that they put uh, up there. So this is the ceremony during three days. We call Manene ceremony. Probably in Toraja, tradition is the tradition, the religion is still religion. So because we are the Toraja people, 
originally from the ancient religion, like animis. People outside say animis, but in Toraja we call aluk todolo. Aluk means religion. Todolo means the ancestor, the religion of the ancestor. Probably before, around the barrel site, there are many bottles, cigarettes, some candies, some cookie, because every year the family visit their family grave and they bring some offering for their family. Because Toraja people, they believe very strong, even they are Christianity, but they still believe that the spirit of that body many years ago, they still come here, they still need the food, they still need the drink and cigarette. So that's why for us every year, mainly July, August, or sometime on December, we are going to visit our family in the everywhere in the Toraja. After that, visit the, our family grave to bring some offering for the spirit of that body. So you can see up there, really good arrange for the skull. Because just a couple months, before the pandemic, COVID-19, uh, that their family, they did the ritual, like I told you before, respect to the ancestors, ma'nene ceremony in front of the burial site. And we still have also another grave behind of this place, yeah, very close, only seven meters. It is the natural cave. Because some of the family, they prepare in the cave. Some of them, they prepare on the hanging grave on the cliff. Some of them, they prepare in the mausoleum. So all of them, it depends on their family. So this is all the, the bamboo forest. So also like that, some of the family, if when it's not enough 24 buffalo, sometimes they made the photo and they put in front of the mausoleum or in front of the family grave. So this is also several, this is the cave. Now I am in the cave. So this is many scatter bones in the skull and also there are the coffin just five years and 10 years ago. So it means this cave is still using this time. And we saw the plastic, yeah? It's not the rubbish, but they are the offering. Uh, also like Coca-Cola, mainly the people before die, what they like, after that when he die, we also bring as an offering to them. Sometimes for the men, if they like beer, we bring beer. If they like palm wine, we bring palm wine or maybe arak. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this moment around Toraja. So we yeah. have. Thank you yes? so. Much. Thank you so much for this wonderful journey. I should say yeah. that many of our partners, our agents, our friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, really dream about visiting Toraja mm -hmm. because it is such a special place. And now we actually had an opportunity to do that, even though virtually. But I think yes. the journey was quite complete. Thank you so yeah. much. So I'm waiting for your coming yeah, in Toraja. Yes, sure. We will be a actually eager to visit very soon once we are able to do that. Okay, Thank you that's so fine. Much. And let us move further from incredible Toraji. You know, I'm sure all of you, you know, you've seen lots of images in the internet, social media, all over National Geographic and such, where the corpses are taken out of the coffins, being cleaned and uh, taken care of and dressed. And so now you know why and who is doing that. That is our beautiful Toraja in yeah. 
beautiful place in Indonesia, yeah, called Tana Toraja. Tana Toraja, that's fine. Thank you, thank you so much. And yeah, you are welcome and see you soon. Absolutely. Yeah. So now, friends, it's time for us to go further. And it's not much left, although we would love to stay with you longer because we miss all of you. And we know you are watching, you are listening, you are actually absorbing everything we show to you. Now it is time for me to show you the pavilion, the river pavilion in Nirjara Hotel, where I am now. Once again, I would like to remind you that Nirjara in Sanskrit means waterfall. So there is really a waterfall in the hotel and you have seen the beautiful territory and also one of the canopy suites. There are only 25 villas in the hotel. So if you are looking for privacy, if you are looking for being close to nature, support sustainable tourism and truly really want to have a real Balinese holiday, uh, you are welcome to stay here. So now I would like to switch on the camera for you to see the river pavilion which I am now in. Actually there are eight river pavilions like that in the hotel and another four exactly the same river pavilions but with the pool. So it offers you quite spacious bedroom which is combined with the living room. You've seen me sitting on a small sofa with a beautiful background of the window facing to the greenery of Bali. So that this is a small living area as well as big bedroom. Of course, going to the bathroom, you should notice a lot of natural light because everything possible is covered with glass, the windows with the greenery behind to remind you that you are in Bali. Just to let you know once again that all the water used here is uh, not bottled water. It is cleaned and produced here in the hotel. So it is really sustainable property. The outdoor shower, of course, this is a favorite place for the travelers because when you come to Bali and having 32 degrees sometimes above, all the day you would love to have your shower outdoors. For those who doesn't like shower outdoors, there is an indoor shower and of course a bathtub. And then we move towards the huge terrace. Huge terrace with your own bathtub once again, another bathtub for you to soak in and enjoy the sound of the waterfall. Because there is a river, that is why it's called River Pavilion, Below there, that makes beautiful water sound. And of course, there is a waterfall near, nearby that you can still have a glimpse of. And of course, here. So that is your own private terrace, huge with a cocoon, where you can lay back, relax, or soak in the bathtub with the view to the jungles, to rice fields to the beautiful sunsets of Bali. You know that the hotel is actually located very close to Tanakh Lot Temple, one of the most important and most visited temples in Bali. So we invite you to come and try for yourself. Don't forget that there are only 25 villas. So once we are open, Bali is waiting for you. Nirjara is waiting for you. Absolutely new, stunning, sustainable, reused, our uh, materials, everything here is to protect the nature and to let you enjoy this nature more. So thank you very much for the tour with me of the pavilion where I am now. And once again, I would like to say thank you to everyone who was with us today and especially to those, our viewers who actually come for every virtual tour we conduct. We're really grateful to you. At the times like this, to see that people are still interested and still would love to know about our country is an amazing support to all of us here. So please stay with us. I am sure if, uh, in case, we still have some time before the season hits and hopefully our borders are open, we will come back to you with another virtual tours and more exciting places to visit in Indonesia. Meanwhile, Please sign up for our YouTube channel, our Facebook page or Instagram, whichever is convenient uh, for you to stay always alerted about any changes happening 
uh, with our destination opening as well as for the news about uh, new places, new hotels to visit, new sightseeing and everything else we would love to share with you. Thank you so much to all the team who supported me today to have this tour come true. And see you again, dear friends. Goodbye.